Everything is soaking wet. No matter how hard I try to keep the tint from dripping on stuff, it does anyway. This is such a mess. If you hear a noise in the background, it's, I don't know. Maybe someone's shouting to test the echo. It's a weird noise. It, also, it's 7 a.m., so if it's a person, like, shh. So here's my plan. Um, I just had a cliff bar instead of making oatmeal and coffee. I'm gonna throw all my stuff in my backpack, hike 10 miles to VVR, Vermilion Valley Resort. It's a very popular place to resupply and I've heard a lot about it so I'm excited for it. I'm gonna do my laundry there. Um, hopefully they'll have a place to spread out my stuff. Uh, and I can't, I just can't wait for that comfort of not being on the trail. So excited. A few things are different today. First, I got ready an hour and 20 minutes. That's a record, but that's just because I didn't eat a cooked breakfast. I'm hiking in the clothes I normally sleep in because my other clothes are wet and because I've been using my pants legs as towels, I don't have the padding under my hip belt. So we'll see how today goes. While well, I was looking forward to a shorter hike today, it sure doesn't seem shorter. I'm also noticing that when I hike, um, things from the past that could have happened five or 10 years ago that weren't great keep coming up in my mind. I don't know why it's so easy to dwell on these negative thoughts. Maybe it's the weather today, Maybe it's just being alone and going through hard stuff physically that my mind wants to, um, I don't know, think thoughts that match that kind of um, dis-ease. Yeah, not having a great day hiking so far. So the ferry, the website said to be there at 9.45 and there was no way I could have made that. It's 11.30 now. So I doubt, like by coincidence, it could be dropping people off and I could catch it, but I doubt it. And it's another five mile walk from there, but I'm kind of okay with that because it's $20 to ride the ferry one way. And like, that's kind of a lot. Although honestly, I would really like to take the ferry. Save me some trouble. I think I'm gonna go down there just in case. so far. It is a little expensive, but this was a much needed break. This is day eight. My hair looks very flowy now because it's been in a break, but really it's just seven days of dirt. So VVR, what a place. It was really hard to leave this morning. In fact, I thought about staying an extra day because it was just so nice to be around people. 
it kind of made me sad to come back to the trail and be alone again. That sucked. But every time someone would ask me how's the trail going so far, I'd be like, honestly, it's pretty hard. And it seemed like everyone else is having a better time than me. Now, that could be just because maybe I'm a little more open about my hardships. Maybe, you know, just polite conversation. How was your hike? Good, how about you? You know, they don't really want to get into it. Maybe most people don't wear their heart on their sleeve as much as I do. But anyway, whether they're having about the same time as me or they're having a better time as me, I'm inspired to try to make it better, try to enjoy it more. You know, maybe not think about the bad aspects of the trail as much and just really soak in where I am. It was definitely easier said than done, but I think it is a mental game, you know? Mind over matter, as they say. It's day nine, hopefully gonna finish on day 16. That was just about two miles of switchbacks, switchbacks uphill. That was very tough. So, cliff bar time. Also, here are the thoughts I've been having. One, I have a different perspective than most people doing this trail because I live in a van. A lot of people, they're probably like, oh, I'm roughing it, but I'm seeing such beautiful stuff. Whereas, honestly, living in a van has spoiled me to that. Also, Also, maybe it is time in my life that I create more consistency for myself. I do have people in my life that love me. I just don't get to see them a lot because I'm always on the move. Moving into this next decade of my life, maybe that's something I should work towards. Not right away, of course, but eventually. Guess what? It's raining again. My favorite thing. Not as much and not as cold as Silver Pass though. I'm coming up to the Bear Creek Creek crossing and I'm going to sleep on the other side. This is a creek crossing that some people bring other shoes for. I did my research, I promise you, before this trail, but somehow I missed that. So, uh, we'll figure it out as we go. Always love it when you have a mosquito on your face. That was extremely hard. The creek crossing was okay. Um, there was rocks all the way across. Sometimes my shoe got like this deep in the water. Um, but my shoes are waterproof. But um, there's already wetness inside of them because of the rain. So, And now I'm dying of thirst and... My lovely thing I have to drink out of is just covered in dirt. <sighs> anyway, after I crossed the river, I couldn't find 
a spot to camp at for the life of me. I looked every couple feet. I ended up walking a mile up the next hill um, where there was a next water source. And a lot of times people make campsites by water sources, you know, it's just a popular place to be and then you kind of trample down plants from growing and then there's a campsite but my back hurts so bad i tried to make my backpack more comfortable and it ended up hurting me even more um it's seven o'clock i'm freezing cold my shorts are soaked through now everything is wet and has dirt sticking to it oh man I am lucky to have found a little bit of dryness underneath these trees, though. This is the third day it's rained, and I've been soaked through. First by Cathedral Lakes, then the day before VVR. Even at VVR, it rained a little. This is really hard. Everyone I see on trail always seems to have their tent set up at like four o'clock. And so, I don't know how they get their miles done so early and then avoid the rain. What a relief. What a, oh, mosquito. Okay, I'll kill him later. Um, it stopped raining enough for me to set up my tent without too much trouble. Everything is soaked, but I can start getting dry and warm. I'm so thankful for that. Thankful I have this tent. I'm thankful it wasn't constantly raining. I'm thankful I have plenty of propane to warm up my food. I'm grateful I have this adventure meal, quote unquote, <laughs> to eat instead of, um, I don't know, something harder. Oh gosh. I don't even want to dare to take off my shoes. And the fun doesn't stop when the rain does. Now my tent is full of condensation because it was really cold last night. And everything that I laid out to dry is still soaked because it was so cold and dark. It didn't dry at all. This is what I did to dry out my tent. I found a sunny spot and tied it up so it could get some airflow. It's still a little damp, but I'm gonna take it out and stretch it out over a rock now. It's almost 10, I gotta get going. Finally leaving at 10.45.
And that was Seldon Pass, done and dusted. That was really not one of the more challenging ones. I felt really good about that. And I think it really helped that I slept so close. So I'm doing some high elevation pretty early in the morning. Look, a marmot. I stopped to eat lunch at this very beautiful lake, but now it is getting windy and cold and it's cloudy, so I'm really hoping it doesn't start raining soon. I stopped to put my raincoat back on, but I ended up looking at the map and just sitting here and thinking, and I'm carrying what's now, I think, seven days of food. I don't think I can finish in seven days. So I could go out of my way to Muir Trail Ranch and get more food. They have a good hiker resupply bin, someone said and buy food for like myself tonight but that's gonna put me two miles off track but I'm gonna already be really behind on miles today anyway it's three o'clock and I'm halfway to where I wanted to be I don't think I can go as fast as I did in the first half of the trail because these rocks Trying to walk on the ground is like trying to walk on marbles and they're rolling out from under you. It's, you, you know, you stub your toe every couple steps. So it's really slow going basically. So I don't know. Um, what if today is just a bad day and then I go back to easily doing 15 miles a day? And this is like my last chance to get more food because there's not any more resupply places unless you go really far off trail. As much as I'm not a fan of these rocks, these ones are pretty cool. There's red and green and black all in the same rock. I wish I could take one. So this is the route to MTR, Muir Trail Ranch. I'm deciding not to go because it's not like I need to get done fast, but I do want to not draw out this trip, you know? My feet hurt, my back hurt. This isn't the most healthy thing for me to do. Sometimes you just gotta light a fire under your own ass. Like I heard this story where these like explorers came over to explore, um, I think it was South America or something, but the captain on the first day there burned the ships so that they couldn't leave. They had to figure out how to make it in the new world. I know, like, you know, why couldn't they just be happy living on the land that already belonged to them instead of taking it away from native people, but that's not the point of the story. The point is sometimes you just gotta commit to something in order to get it done. Yes, 
entering Kings Canyon. Woo! It's beautiful already. About two miles before where I planned to stop for the night, I ran into a couple that I had seen before on the trail. We met walking up Donahue Pass on the same day, and then I saw them again at VVR, and they invited me to camp with them. And you know, we, we just made dinner and went straight to bed pretty much, but it was so nice just having company, having people to camp with.